right, hi everybody. <laughs> it's Kim and Jennifer Fleece and Harmony from Fleece and Harmony in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. And um, we're just gonna talk about how shadowy and dark it is. We're actually filming this during daylight hours but there's a huge thunder storm coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, I hope I hope my chin is not creating a shadow. <laughs> are we, are we leaving be. that in? Yeah. <laughs> are we sure? It might be. I think everyone's, anyway. everything's creating a shadow right. in this light. So yeah, it's have... getting blacker by the minute outside. Yeah. And maybe we'll have some thunder and lightning sound effects. That I could think, be cool. Yeah. Hopefully right. they hit at the right times when we're showing the yeah. finished objects. On a steel roof. That yeah. can be a lot of excitement. That's, That's going to be right. very exciting. <laughs> okay. So it's actually episode 17. I can't believe it. Every time it, the number goes up, it just seems like 17 seems like a lot. Anyway, it's going, you'll be watching this on July 19th, starting on July 19th. And um, for those that uh, haven't joined us before, welcome. I think we've got some new, like quite a few new viewers and subscribers. 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 Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, hit that button. Yep. <laughs> the subscribe another... button makes us very happy. Yes, yeah. and you'll uh, have a chance at the end. The, the, there's a button at the end or you can scroll down below and do that. For those of you that have been with us all along or joined us and we even heard, we've even had people that said they were binge watching us, which is That's funny. Hilarious. That's great. Yes, yeah. it's very good. Anyway, you know who you are. Welcome yeah. back. And we had some viewers in the store this week too. Yes. So thank you for coming by. Yeah, we are always, <laughs> we're out back working. Right. So if you come in and you really want to chat with us, I think you have to ask for us to come out because I feel right. like maybe we miss some people. Yes. Because we literally we... are in the back making the yarn. Right. And we, uh, <laughs> we always send Ken out. Yeah. Ken's our top <laughs> salesperson. Yeah, exactly. So we send him out, and uh, but we're always here. Yeah. So we, yes. we're, we're, <laughs> we spinning, can never we're spinning and dying and dying to spin. Yeah. And it's 29 degrees here today. And I'm wearing this wool mohair sweater. Yeah, not yet. I have to wait. Okay, but so, I'm, I'm gonna have to start having beads of sweat okay. form on my face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we think that this is gonna be a little bit of a shorter uh, episode this week because we don't have an interview. Last week uh, or last episode's interview with Janet was so well received. Yeah. We want to thank everybody for all your lovely comments and we want to thank Janet for participating yeah. because it was really, really great. Um, lots of warm and fuzzies coming from everybody. Yes. Yeah. The universe. Which we love. It was great. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. And it was excellent information. Yeah. Too. So if you haven't seen that episode, go back yeah, and see it. Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, episode 16. So um, we have a farm update. So we already talked about the weather. So thunder and lightning coming soon. It's hot. It like it's hot, <laughs> but it's going down to 14 degrees Celsius tonight. Shut the front door. No, that's right. Wow. Yeah. So that's we're gonna some maritime weather for you right yeah. there. Wow. Yeah. So I won't. I'll be sweating to death in my sweater while we record, and then I'll wear it to bed tonight. Right. That's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. So and uh, so the farm update is really you know touch wood. Not much has gone on really. Yeah, that's a good Everybody's thing. Everybody's out on grass and eating and happy, and except we had some runaway lambs. Oh. Yeah. And now, did we figure out why that happened exactly? No. I always seem like I'm stunned. I'm like, really? Yeah. So <laughs> when you do electric fencing, you have the bottom wire is a deterrent, but not electrified because the grass grows over it so quickly. Yeah. You don't want to have it draining the electricity. So um, they figured out that the bottom wire, and I think their wool is getting thick enough that they're not getting the full effect of um, mm -hmm. of the fence when it's they an when they go through. It's an insulator, <laughs> so they are actually kind of charging it and and going out. Why? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they're industrious because the grass is always greener on the ah, other side. Ah, it's fence, true. I think. Yes. So um, we had a couple. Our neighbors called us, and we have a we have a uh, field that abuts right on literally somebody's backyard. So their their, their garden, lot, yeah, their <laughs> lot was um, a long time ago cleaved off of the farm. So it's kind of this little diamond that juts into 
what would normally be a rectangle. And um, they're, uh, they're right there. And uh, luckily the guy called and he says, I think you have some runaways or <laughs> they're eating Aww. in my backyard. And, <laughs> Did you say you need your lawn mowed? Right, so they didn't do any damage to a garden or get into anything that would hurt them or anything, but we had to get them, get them back. So then we did some uh, back up fencing for some redundancy and that worked pretty good, except they actually found that today they found a little gap in the redundancy fencing and we had a, another neighbor call us and say, he was, she was, he was coming from the general store. I texted Ken and said, I think you got a lamp outside of the fence. Luckily, there, there is a road there, but there's quite a deep ditch before you get to the road, so they don't go down there, and they stay oh, with the flock. Oh my gosh, but I didn't know about this, because no. I was at the hairstylist. Yes, okay. yes. So that happened today. So now Ken's put the, the wire fencing, the mesh around absolutely everything, so, and we're moving them to a field tomorrow. A new field. Wow, that's, we've never that's had bad. that happen. I know. In seven years, we've never had escapees like that. Yeah, I know. Huh. So anyway, it's new. <laughs> they kind of they've kind of learned that they can do it if they go fast enough. They just push right through. Little so, devils. Yeah. So they're adventurous for prey animals. What's with these lambs? Right. Did we did we accidentally keep a smarter ram or something? I don't. We need to fix. <laughs> we need to fix right. this. Wayne is the new one. He doesn't right. look particularly smart. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that. So the lambs are, uh, um, the worst part is they escape and then they follow the flock around on the outside of the fence, which is, <laughs> which is, you know, why are you doing it? But also good in a way because they, their flocking instinct is yeah. so strong that they stay, they stay with the flock even though they're out free. Wow. Anyway, right. so that's fixed for tonight. We don't have to worry. And we're moving them to the next field that's available that the grass is growing on and it's back up full field. So right. if they do get out, there's perimeter fencing their everywhere. Their moms so will be stuck in another field so they won't go too far. Yeah, they won't go too far. So that's that firm updates. It never ends. There's always right. something. But something else cool happened today. Did we have oh, more yes. than one car come by? No. Oh, we only got one. <laughs> well, right now on the island, there's 200 Model T Fords. Right. So cool. So they've come from all over, certainly the States and Canada. And I think yes. you said some people were coming from Europe. Could that be right? I don't know. I guess they brought, sent their car over. Gosh, yeah, because they're trailering them. Because um, yeah. a guy told me today it would, it would take a week to drive from New Jersey. It's not oh, that far. Yeah. Um, and it was really cool. And I got to sit in one. And it was manufactured in 1911, I think. Oh, okay. She said it was a 1914. Oh, maybe 14. It was yeah. actually the wife that owned. It was her I car. I know. Right? Yeah, it was the wife's car. Right. Shame on me for assuming. Right. Yeah, but it's the wife's car. They were a lovely couple, and they must have so much fun going around in that little thing. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I accidentally knocked over her water bottle and spilled some water on the seat. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did he and see? I, it? And I, yeah. Oh, I was like, oh my god, I spilled water on the seat. I was like, I'll wipe it up with my bum. <laughs> and I just soaked all the water up with my jeans and then he's like it's okay it gets rained on all the time because they don't really oh, they've always right. got the canopy down right like I think it does have a roof but he had it down anyway yeah. what a fancy little machine and I, I took a few photos so we'll show them yeah oh good fun but it was really yeah. fun yeah, yeah. yeah it's a really cool thing I to think have. they do do they do it every year or every, every so often they come yeah. here I think yeah like, yeah so it was called the red dirt tour or something oh, like that, well, that yeah. Makes, oh yeah it must get off there it'll be all full of red dust inside those vehicles yeah, by the time they got out of here. Red, red dirt all right. It'll be so dusting for the next it. year. So, uh, and then we just have to tell the story because I thought it was hilarious. So you were at a birthday party. Oh, yeah. You know you're a farmer when? Yeah. So I was at, I was at my niece's um, birthday party last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all sitting around outside. And so I had put a little sweatshirt on, you know, because it was a bit chilly. We were in Halifax. And I reached into my pocket to put my hands in. And I was like, oh. What's, uh, what's something I don't recognize that would be in my pocket? And I pulled out my hand and I had a lovely rabbit turd. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very unusual, I have to say. And everyone was like, excuse, what, wait, what now? And I was like, it's a rabbit turd in my pocket. <laughs> No idea how that came here. <laughs> and, uh, it must have fallen I, 
have a page yeah, when we, we carry her back Because I don't really clean out the rabbit hutch in that sweatshirt. I wear no. coveralls. And then... Oh, we, I thought it was in your pants. It was no, in your no, sweatshirt. No, no, it was in my sweatshirt pocket. Oh, okay. Even worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get them in my boot all the time because you're <laughs> sweeping them. Anyway. Yeah. And then we were telling the story at midnight and Rachel said, oh, you probably were in the store and a customer was in and Paige had an accident and you were like, oh my God. And just picked it up and was like, well, just get rid of that. Yeah. So I don't know, but anyway, I did not pull a rabbit out of a hat because I was not officially the entertainment at the party, but I did pull a rabbit turd out of my pocket. All right, that's it's great. equally impressive, I think. I think, I'm sure <laughs> all those city people were impressed for <laughs> yeah. Oh, something you carry for emergencies? And I was like, I'm such a farmer, I just pulled it out and we were in the backyard and I tossed it and just kept eating. <laughs> yeah. no, it doesn't bother me, they're very dry. Yes, <laughs> depending on when it, when it ended up in there. If it wasn't squished, it was dry. I might have washed my hands. I actually don't remember. <laughs> Neither scenario would surprise yes. me. Yes, and it really doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. No. It doesn't matter. That's no. the good news. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. So you're survived. Nothing is incubated. Yes, we never it. get sick, hardly ever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Our immune systems are on point. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, so other than those things, that was, that's just how yeah. boring our life is. Yeah. Rabbit turds and Model T Fords. And <laughs> run away, one runaway lamb. But they didn't really yeah. run away. They just pretended to run yeah, away. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, that would be good. very dangerous. We yeah. wouldn't like that at all. Yeah, no, we wouldn't like that. All right, good. Okay. All right, so now we're, it's time to talk about finished objects. Yay, okay. Well, I'm wearing my bear schwa. Mm-hmm. Which all I had to do left, if you recall from last episode, was add the sleeves. So I've got these on, and it's actually a lovely sweater. It's very warm. <laughs> I'm very excited. I finally got it blocked properly. Right. There might be a couple little tweaky parts I might want to steam block just to flatten out a little bit. Because right. it's hard to block a sweater like this flat, I think. Because it's no seams. So oh, you can... Yeah. Just this little bit here, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I got to do a little bit of crochet. You probably right. can't see this, but there's a little line of crochet here, which <laughs> our friend That's Simone beautiful. taught me how to do at midnight. And she's like a super skilled everythinger. Right. And I'm sure it was very painful for her sitting there <laughs> watching me <laughs> attempt at doing this surface slip stitch thing. And she, she even offered to take over. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, Simone. You don't have to do my crochet. Or, I'll get it. I can do this. Yeah. Anyway, you I'm sure Rachel. she'll be thrilled to see that I did it and it's very straight yeah it is yeah so and that was my very it. first crochet thing and I think it's a really cool detail right now I will admit I have another one to put down here that I didn't quite have time to do yes because I got a little distracted halfway through the project okay finishing by my whip right can I go right into my whip and rip no oh I can't We're okay we'll talk about that later but you'll see I got quite a bit done on another project that yeah. I shouldn't have there's a slacker well, no. I just that sort you of put my mind on this. At first, you were worried that you weren't going to make the deadline, but then it was clear that the deadline was well in hand. Yeah. So then you started another project. So then I, yeah, then I got greedy and wanted to do something else simultaneously, <laughs> and actually can't really take credit for 100% finishing this, even wow. though, as always, I said last episode, it'll definitely be done by next episode. Right. I say that all well, the time. Well, when you see how lame my finished objects are, you're you're fine. All right. Well, knitting is knitting. Yes, exactly. Okay. Oh, we have another FO. That's why I can't. Yes. Okay. Are you going to show that? Yeah. It's an F. We've, we've sunk to a whole new level showing FOs that we didn't even knit that somebody else We're knit. stealing them now. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm doing it as my whip. So yes. So I'll do that and then do my whip. Okay. They, it's a good segue. Okay, okay. So we've mentioned this project a couple times. So this is the Virgo shawl by Ash Alberg, Sunflower Knit. Right. And um, the pattern was done when Ash designed it in Lichen in Eldon Lace. This is it done by the lovely Janet, our helper, uh, in Mayflower mm -hmm. in Eldon Lace. And I just wanted to show it because this color is just spectacular. Yeah. Do you want to hold up the... Yeah. Now, Janet chose not to put the fringe on. Mm -hmm. It does, the finished um, design does have a fringe on it, but we respect her <laughs> personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, and I am going to put the fringe on mine because I think that's actually an exciting part. But what yeah. a beautiful, simple... It's very generously proportioned shawl project, and it takes exactly two skeins of Eldon to do it. Right, and it blocked beautifully. Oh, I, it's wonderful, and I actually can't hold it because I'm hot enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I think everybody gets the picture. Everybody it's who's lovely. knitting it is loving it. And so I worked a little bit on that. I was inspired by Janet. 
and I'm doing it in November Sky. So not really much to report with this, but I did get like another repeat done. Mm -hmm. I tried to do it during midnight. <laughs> and um, you know what? The first thing I did, okay, I got a couple rows done yeah. with a mistake. <laughs> you had to drill down and add a slip slip knit. Right. Which I hate adding a slip slip knit. Yeah. I can add a knit two together, but the slip slip knit backwards, whatever it is, left leaning maneuver when you're, when you're going down with the crochet hook, I can't do. Mm -hmm. So we got that all sorted out. So I think I had two rows done. There were a lot of guests. It's <laughs> wonderful. We had people from Edinburgh, BC, British Ohio. Columbia in Canada, a couple from Ohio, both yeah. a husband and wife, knitters, knit. wonderful, yeah. knitting for charity in fact, which yeah. is great. And then I, uh, so I was I answering questions and chatting and we were talking about this and that and admiring everybody's project, eating cake, eating cake, <laughs> answering questions. And I looked down and I had joined my lovely thing in the round, <laughs> which typically I can barely figure out how to do what I'm supposed to. <laughs> and so then I was like, all right, so my knit night project clearly still not simple enough. No. Now I've, now I've gone and overcomplicated it by joining in the round. Yes. So everybody was just like, wow. Yeah. yeah you really real <laughs> yeah, you really can't knit at knit night. Yeah. So I would have had more done. Right. But now I'm using this as a break in between some other things that I'm working on. So that is my Virgo shawl. So now I, speaking of knit night, I've just given up. So yeah, I'm but I have to have another whip. Yes, I know. Oh, so okay. we're going to do uh, my finished shawl. Oh, yeah, info. This is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're out of order. It's fine. All right. So I've given up because knit night and Joe Bat don't go together with Kate and <laughs> Clearly not. talking and everything. So now we, uh, I think we mentioned in the last episode that we are now carrying the Rowan Kidsil case. Yep. And um, anybody that watched, I think it was like one of the first or second um, episodes where I stranded with our wool to make my car bath. So ever since then, I've been dreaming of more stranded projects. So we brought brought in the Rowan um, Kid Silk Haze into the store, and I decided that the perfect knit night project was to make the Rowan swatches and with the Rowan with, mixed with our Aran weight mm -hmm. yarn. So I've done all these swatches with these beautiful halos, and you get can I can get one done during knit night, and I've done like tone on tone, and I've done with. Uh, variegated color and then I did this which as I was knitting it this was last knit night I just felt like you're you'll you're gonna be some kind of little lovely bunny when you knit something like this <laughs> you're gonna wear it you'll be a bunny I don't know it's just <laughs> You can't, it's like you can't keep your hands off of it. Yeah, so let's tell really everybody like... what the colors are that we've done. So this yeah. is Buttercups yeah. with the cream. Yeah. And this is our variegated colorway Harbor with right. liqueur. Yes. And this is a brown, dark brown pine cone with liqueur over yes. it. And it comes out looking exactly like our red currant wine yes. that we had last winter. Yeah. It's very edition. interesting. And they're all, of course, super soft because hello, yes. silk mohair. And we did, uh, yeah, I knit them on six millimeter needles. So the six millimeter seems to be the perfect weight for this. For Erin double-stranded. Yes, yeah. it just, uh, it just it has a really nice drape. Um, the I tried one swatch that we didn't bother to show on a five millimeter and it's just a little too dense. So to get the, the nice bloom. Yeah, yeah, you don't get the bloom, uh, the bloom that you yeah. get with that. So I'll continue doing those on knit night. Yeah. Because I find it really helpful for customers to see how, especially when you're using contrasting colors. Yeah. And the, how it, how it interacts. Yeah. yeah. We actually had a customer today that bought November Sky with the cream oh, and it's going to yeah. make the car best swan dance. Yeah. So I'm dying to see how that's going to look. Maybe you can swatch that one this yes. night. Yes. Okay. Because that'll be really cool. I love the cream uh, and we chose cream because our yarn is cream, right. but all it does, it doesn't really impact the color. It just adds the lovely bloom without, right. you know, without anything else. So we purposely bought a cream to be able to do that. Yeah. And it's just lovely. Yeah. And yeah. I don't, no, um, I find for the variegated, I don't know if I've said this before, I'm not the biggest fan in the world about knitting like big projects with variegated yarn. I like it as an accent or not, but I found what I found like for, with Harbor, for example, which is a popular colorway anyway, 
but it just kind of um, mellows the 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 haze from the kids silk haze. Actually, just sort of me mellows the variegation a little bit. It turned out beautifully. Yeah, yeah. So I thought of every time I finished one, I thought of another project that I would want to do with yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you might be doing everything double stranded. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So those are that's my knit night project. All right. Really, well, really you know, gave up. I pretty much just eat, so... Yes. Now she's let everybody know that she doesn't even eat dinner beforehand <laughs> because she wants to make sure... Don't come to knit night with a full belly. No. It's really something. So delicious. Yes. Okay. Okay. Rachel. <sighs> okay. Rachel. okay. So, so now, now my whip. Yeah. Do, we, do you want me just to continue on with my Joe Bet? Sure. And then that'll be fast because okay. I'm really... I'm Now I'm saying I'm not going to show Joe Bat again <laughs> until... I have something that's a little bit more interesting to show. The only thing I can say about this now, and I've left these long uh, people that are ready to make comments about I should be <laughs> weaving so in my good. ends. I'm actually going to sew. Uh, I'm going to sew with the ends, so I've left them long enough that I can sew. But I actually do have two sleeves. Joe Bat has two arms. Well, blocked, that's pretty washed and good blocked. progress for for that, like a complicated stitch work yeah. like that. And now, I said in the last episode that, uh, and I was really careful about the measurements, I have to say, they because this has to, go, has to go like a pu puzzle piece. And then I mentioned in the last episode that I was going to get to a very exciting part the next time <laughs> with the schematic and everything that I was afraid to look at, but it's not the next step. That's for the color work. So... I am actually, so this is the front, and you'll see why I'm not going to bother, because it's the, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like that song, Henry VIII. Right. Second verse, same as the first. <laughs> it's, it's the same, until you get down to where there's a little bit of shaping, so this will be the last time you'll see Joe Bat, until I have something really right. exciting to... It's enough. Well, it's a good, okay. Yeah. It's still beautiful. No it's still beautiful status. and I'm happy with the way that it's turning out and the, um, you know, the, everything is going well. It's just that it's, it's a, I think it's an, everybody gets the picture. Right. Okay. Whew, so, is it hot in here? Yeah. Okay. It's really hot. Okay. <laughs> it's only 29 yeah. Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. 90 something. Uh, I don't know what is it. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So ranunculus in Elden lace in slate. Uh, so you just had the cast on, basically. The last yeah, one. I did just have the cast on, which I ended up having to redo because I twisted it when I joined it. <laughs> Midnight, when I joined my flat project, I did not twist it. Yeah. <laughs> probably because it was already six inches long by then. Right. So anyway, it's going to, obviously you cannot see the pattern in this because it's such a dark color and it's also a little bit very sort of modely, the mm -hmm. slate, the way that this dyed up. But uh, I'm really having fun with this and I've I've only used one ball and I've got all this done already. So I've already right. divided for the sleeve. It looks a bit like tiny and squinchy, but it will actually really open up into right. a full size sweater, I promise. Um, I did go down a needle size to make it just because I tend to knit loose and also it's a one size fits all project and I am on the smaller side mm -hmm. so I thought uh, I'm just I think I can afford to go down half a millimeter mm -hmm. um, so it's I think it's, it's uh, the instructions say a six and I did a 5.5 mm -hmm. but what fun I did learn a couple new little stitches and things it's really I don't know it's just really fun and exciting pattern I did have to rip it once I accidentally did something wrong and then I went to drill down and got a bunch of yarn overs and ended up with a hole about that big and, oh uh-huh so I had to rip that all the way back. Mohair, always fun. But I got back on track pretty quickly because sometimes when that happens, I panic. Like, I'm just going to rip it back to the beginning. I'll right. never get them all back on the needles. But I did. And one really, really cool technique that Midori has in this pattern, which I just want to share with you because I think you could use it anytime you divide for sleeves. When um, you go and cast on under the underarm, mm -hmm. she had you cast on an extra stitch and then bind it off with the following body stitch to close that hole. Right. It's a brilliant thing you could do anytime you're casting on under the arm. So I, I just- I think you can do that with the gusset of socks as well. 
Yeah. And I did it with my thumb. And do an actual bind off stitch. Yeah. Yeah. And it closes the hole. Yeah. So I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I love learning things like that in a pattern because I didn't take this on to be a tremendous challenge or anything, but that's something I will use every time I have to do that kind of sleeve now. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it worked like a charm. Right. Like this is beautiful. There's not a gap, a gap there. No. Yeah. It's beauty. So I'm going to love this. It's also going to be very warm though, even though it's light and airy, this, this, uh, wool mohair is, um, is quite warm. Yeah. That, the color turned out great. Yeah. I love I it. I love the model Yeah. So, oh. um, and there's a couple choices in this pattern. So you can do a really open wide, almost like, well, it wouldn't be a boat neck, but like a wider neck or a mm-hmm. narrower neck. You can do a short sleeve or a long sleeve. And I think there's a, an option on the sleeve finishing on the long sleeve. Like if you want to make it a straight cuff or a, um, I think you could do like a diagonal cuff. Oh, yeah. So I did the wide neck, but I, it's not super wide because I didn't do the convoluted cast on that she recommends. (laughs) And I'm sorry, but I just, I I don't do convoluted cast ons. I have to put this down. Yeah, I know. We're my dying. Is, it's so uh, hot. <laughs> I'm sure we're getting like sweatier by the minute. Um, so I just, I have a thing about, I don't like those ones where you do with the finger. I can't do it. I can't do those. Like a long tail? Like the long tail, but the thing where your thing and it's double oh. twit. Okay, well, you don't have to do it. I know. Yeah. But it did make it, of course, tighter than what, um, what was recommended in the pattern. But I'm cool with that because yeah. I did the wide one anyway. And, uh, yeah, Good. loving it. It's the, all about what you're comfortable doing or what yeah. you want to do. So, and I don't that. know, I feel like it's possible. I'll finish it with one ball. Certainly if you did the short sleeves, I think you would be able to finish really? it with one ball. Yeah. It does say 460 yards on the pattern. Wow. And these are okay. 500. Yeah. But you know, you have to do, and I did go down a needle size. So mine is a tiny bit denser. So right. I would actually end up using a bit more right. um, than somebody else. Who it's an amazing pattern, pattern eh? that you would yeah. be able to make a sweater with 460 Yeah. Yards. And I know one of our retailers, Wabi Sabi in Ottawa, just did a knit along with this pattern too. Oh, okay. And it's great because you know what? For one thing, it's one size fits all. So swatching, no. Yeah. Like what? No. Why? Yeah. Although I guess gauge might be a little bit important, but um you know it's whatever goes with this and uh it's quick yeah you know it's fun it doesn't take a ton of yarn and it sort of fits everybody Mm -hmm. almost yeah um and there is a modification as well that comes with if you have a larger bust oh okay um which is very helpful so i obviously don't have that problem (laughs) so i just did the regular one (laughs) (laughs) anyway so that's whipping her up Right. Okay. So, yeah, that's, I, I actually can hardly wait to see that done. I know. It's going to be nice. Me either. Yeah. Fun. (laughs) It reminds me, uh, I have a sweater, it was store-bought, but that lacy kind of tunic that I have that has a little sequence um, knitted in with it, and it reminds me of that. Yeah. That texture of it. You can put sequins or beads in it. Yeah. Ah. I know. And I always wanted to reproduce that sweater because it's in black, but I always wanted to reproduce that sweater in a different color. So I'm really interested yeah, to see Yeah, because on this. the slip stitch rows that go in between the eyelets, you could yeah. actually put beading along there. Right. Ooh, I might have to make another one. Yeah. Nice. And you could make another one. I feel like if I wasn't doing all this other stuff, I could have finished it in a week. Right. For sure. Right now, all I have left to do are 10 centimeters of stockinette and 8 centimeters of uh, ribbing. And then you're on to the sleeves. Oh. And if it's the short sleeves, there's nothing to them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Great. So well, can't it is, say enough about that. It's one ball of yarn that you're yeah. doing. Yeah. So. I'm so happy that I actually finally got to cast it on. Yeah. Good. That's great. So um, I think that's it. So the only other thing that we wanted to talk about is that we actually have all of the colors except for one, which we have, but it's in the dye vat uh, right now, left of the... Um, 50% wool, 50% green gable alpaca yarn that we made. So we finally got a handle on how much yarn we need to make. <laughs> so that we don't sell out in a so day. So we don't yeah. sell out in a day. So I'll just uh, show the all of the colors because we only had two colors um, last time. So we have uh, Fox and Kit. Oh, Fox and Kit is this one. And then we have um, the Slate. Slate. And then we have spruce. Pine no, forest. sorry, pine forest. And oh, mm-hmm. the amethyst brooch. Yep. 
Yeah. It's a nice one. And then, of course, we're missing Vineyard, which is typically the most popular. Yes. But that's why we don't have any. Yes, I think this but is But I'm dying your... some more. Yeah. Yeah, yes. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's this color. Yeah. <laughs> My poor fingers. So I just want to make an, uh, a little comment as well, because we have lots of people writing us about our yarns and everything. And everybody thinks that... Um, the yarn is called warm and fuzzy on the inside, mm -hmm. but it's not. We're, that's just our sense of humor <laughs> for the label. So um, we mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. We started putting the base name on the label. So if you're buying new yarns, um, you'll see that the, the base is there. And the last time we were um, on the episode, I don't think we said that it was called Bell River DK. Well, I had put it on the title, yes. so we hadn't decided yet. Yeah, we hadn't decided when we filmed. So it's Bell River DK, 50% our wool, 50% alpaca from Green Gable Alpaca, and uh, this selection of uh, colors, and we have a little bit left. So Yeah, we have a few sweater quantities. If, yeah. Yeah, and people have bought sweater quantities, and they've done, I, there's some yoke stuff coming with some of these colors combined. Right. It would be low contrast, for sure. Right. They're obviously all quite dark, because they're over dyed on a brown. Right. Uh, but I can't wait to see the projects. Which reminds us, don't forget to join our Ravelry group. Right. And um, post your projects in our FO thread on there. Mm -hmm. And now we have something else exciting. Yes. It's oh, it just gets better and better when you own a mill and can have so much fun. You're right. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about it because I want to do a proper next episode. Yes. It's going to be the big, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what I want to say. So I've spun something very special. So as people that have, if you've watched us before, we're all about sourcing local fiber. And I'm not going to say too, too much because I don't have all the information, the proper information to talk about it. But lucky us, we actually had a person who is a goat herder of cashmere goats move to the Maritimes. Yeah. So, cashmere. Cashmere. Local cashmere. Yes. Mm. So not PEI local, but Nova Scotia local. Yeah. We're from Nova Scotia. It's, it's pretty close, local. Close enough. I actually think I could swim in there if I had to. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe on the shore, on the board and crossing. Yeah. I'm sure I could. Yeah. Probably not. Of course, I have friends who could. 14 kilometers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it was life or death, I could make it. Oh, okay. No. So. <laughs> she get the picture. Yeah. Anyway, it's close. Well, it's that would close. be in New Brunswick too, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyways. Yes. <laughs> you don't need to correct your geography. <laughs> Delusions of grandeur over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're just so excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's local. So um, we're. It's really just a test. We're gonna see how it how it turns out. But I can hardly wait to see the yarn. Yeah, and we have a whole plan. We have a whole color plan, project yep. plan, inspiration plan. We're yep. very excited. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't really introduce it until we knew that it was at least going to be spinnable which yes. it's now safely spun yes and sitting back there just waiting to be dyed yes so yeah. i wasn't sure i'd never i never touched raw cashmere before so i had no that's idea experience yes yeah. i had no idea how it was gonna how it was gonna turn out and how it would mix with our wool because it's the base of it is our uh, our wool and uh, it's it's pretty exciting actually yeah like to just stick your hands in that like who gets to do that really yeah because yeah. typically it's five to fifteen percent or whatever that you right. might get in a yarn and we were there with the hundred percent going oh uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's yeah. really something all right but we'll talk more about the process yeah and we'll that. introduce it properly yeah. and we'll talk about the farm that it comes from and stuff yeah. like that so we'll but that's have a just a thing. teaser because that's... we're really excited yeah we are we can't we can't keep yeah. quiet about it for yeah too long. and we can never we could never find enough local cashmere to make that a regular product so it's just really exciting right. to have some fun with something special like that right so um, and then we have another little um, shop update which is uh, um, we got the brought in the Rowan yarn because it's something that I can't really make and I'm not gonna um, spin silk because it's not local so and I really wanted to do something that had that stranding effect so so we have bought that yarn and at the same time we ordered another special yarn um, the way our process works if you watch the past episodes with the welcome to our world segments on it you see how the carding um, takes some time and it needs to be placed and when you're blending fibers on the carter um, it's it's like building a pizza every Four two, minutes. Two minutes and two, 45 seconds. Two minutes and 45 <laughs> seconds. So the more different fibers you have in a yarn, 
the longer it takes to make and it becomes quite intense and I would say the best analogy is the Lucille famous yeah. Lucille ball <laughs> in the chocolate factory trying to keep up blending at the right so anything that's more than three different fibers to blend it's not really even worth it for us to make it it's it's really difficult so um, we brought in Road to China Light by Fiber yeah. & Co. Yeah. Fiber Co. Yeah. It's exciting. And it's really exciting. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely yarn. So, oh, and we're carrying it because we really can't make it efficiently. Yeah, so. and nor do we have camels on the island. No, we don't have camels <laughs> and we don't have silk. If anyone has a camel on PEI, I'd yeah. like to love to know about it. Or yeah. Nova Scotia <laughs> or New right. Brunswick. So it is cashmere camel silk and baby alpaca. Yeah. Uh, and we sort of bought um, jewel tones, basically. Right. But we'll maybe talk more about it. Um, and right now it's just available in the store, but we are going to get it up online soon, right. too. Right. And, uh, oh, gosh, it's nice. Yeah. So your eyes are <laughs> your eyes are not playing tricks on you. We look completely different, but yet we're still in the same outfits. So at the end of the last segment, it, the camera stopped on the iPhone. So uh, we really hope that this is not going to be a problem like with the other iPhone that we had. So we're it's just hopeful it was a, a one-time thing. So here we are. It's the next day because Jen was almost done the editing and was like, what happened to the rest of the, <laughs> to the, rest of the podcast? So we're almost finished, but uh, we talked about our Fiber Co. Uh, yarn that we had, so we're really happy to have that. And what we were going to talk about next is dyeing in the greener shades uh, dye, dyes yeah. that Jennifer uses. So here we are. It's so hard to redo this when, we, when the silly camera does that. Yeah. Um, so basically we just wanted to let you know that we are putting these greener shades dye kits up online. So this is the dye that I use. It comes in nine colors and it's in nine colors in the kit. And uh, that's it. That's all that's available. Everything yeah. I've made or all of my designs are custom blended. Um, there's no like off the shelf pretty purples and things like that. You have right. to create everything, but um, a lot of people do seem to be interested in getting into dyeing. So we thought we'd put these up. And uh, of course we love this stuff because it was invented by another Belfast Mini Mills owner, Greg at Still River. Mm -hmm. And it comes with the citric acid you need um, to get it to strike and all nine colors. Right. And usually I say take it slow and just do really light depths of shade to begin with. And then you can always over dye it if you make a mistake or the effect isn't what you're looking for. And so that's a really fun thing, and a lot of people have been buying in the shop, so we thought we'd put them up online as well. It's pretty amazing that um, like we've got, tech, officially we have 72 colors. In reality, we have 172 <laughs> colors, or have made more. Uh, we over don't the time. know. We don't know. We lost count. <laughs> but it's amazing that, and one of these jars has black in it, yeah. which I don't really consider a, a color necessarily, right. but it's hard to believe that you can make all of this variety of color just with eight little yeah. jars of stuff yeah, mixed together. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, yeah, it's yeah. really, uh, really amazing. Color theory is like a whole other world of uh, excitement that I knew nothing about when right. I started this. But um, when the people from Swen were here a couple weeks ago, they were watching me mix up um, a navy color and I got out the yellow and the red and she was like what <laughs> like how yeah. can there be yellow and red in that but there is you know that's yeah. how it works it's pretty cool yeah and after beautiful. all there are only three primary colors red yellow and blue and so yeah. that's what everything everything comes from it's that, amazing so. and not being the one that dies I just I'm always amazed and we're really lucky because you have a particularly good eye for the components now of the color. It's kind of like a chef that has a good palate that can Maybe. taste the different ingredients. You, Your eye sees things that I would never even imagine were in there. Huh. I, didn't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really well. want to take credit for that, but maybe. Well, I, <laughs> I can't I, I get this. This is one we're missing. <laughs> that kind of lovely <laughs> chartreuse color oh. I need to work on, but I don't have time to work on much more and we don't really need more colors. <laughs> Truthfully, uh, but someday, I'll, some winter, I'll conquer that. Yeah. I'm anyway, sure. that was all we had planned. Yeah. And I'm probably looking a lot less sweaty than I was in the earlier parts of the, yes, <laughs> the video. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. We get to do another weather report. It's a beautiful <laughs> twice in one podcast. Yeah. A beautiful clear day uh, 
with just a little bit of a breeze, it's really, really nice. The rain, uh, we had a huge amount of rain last night and it really cleared out the humidity and everything. Yeah, so we're, that's good. we're all uh, cool. We and... looked like we were down in the deep south. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now it's just the typical chilly maritime weather. Right. Again. Yeah. So that's really it. We didn't want to go yeah. on any longer than that. It's a little bit shorter, like we said, because we don't have a, an interview this time, but we'll stay tuned for some exciting things coming up. So we wish everybody a great weekend and a good two weeks until we meet again on the next podcast. So I guess with that, we'll, we'll say, say goodbye. goodbye. Bye. Bye.